Environmental Protection Agency is launching a major effort to eliminate what are known as forever chemicals from the nation's drinking water. Yeah, achieving that though here in the Bay Area could require some specific solutions. ABC 7 weather anchor Spencer Christian joining us once again with a look at what's going on. That's right, uh, Larry. These chemicals are commonly known as PFAS, P-F-A-S, representing a large complex group of synthetic chemicals used in many everyday products, but the source of PFAS pollution can change significantly depending on where you live. This represents PFOS, it's one of our PFAS. For scientist Rebecca Sutton, the toxic samples on the wall represent years of hard work. She and her collaborators at the San Francisco Estuary Institute have spent more than a decade tracking chemicals known as PFAS. So they can harm a lot of different organ systems in the body. They can harm the kidneys, the liver, our blood, our reproductive and immune function. PFAS, known also as forever chemicals, are now in the crosshairs since the Environmental Protection Agency proposed tight new standards to protect the nation's drinking water. But Sutton says the situation here in the Bay Area is different from other parts of the country where the pollution is still driven by heavy manufacturing. So we want to make sure it's a good mix of bay water and fresh water. Teams from the Estuary Institute have used techniques like sampling storm runoff into San Francisco Bay to learn more. The goal, to identify which chemicals are present in our environment and where they're coming from. And that's where we monitor PFAS. And we look at PFAS in the water, in the sediment, and in all kinds of bay wildlife. And we're concerned there to see the levels and the buildup in the bay. And here in the Bay Area, common sources typically range from personal products and cleaning agents to clothing, carpeting, and more. And once they're washed into the bay, the chemicals can potentially enter the marine food chain. Andrea Ventura is with the environmental group Clean Water Action. Um, and we've seen this with things like mercury. We expect this with P PFAS chemicals. We've seen it with uh, PCBs and other contaminants in, in water bodies like the bay. Researchers say they're also working to better understand how PFAS pollutants may be entering drains and wastewater systems and at what volumes. But they believe the most efficient way to control the chemicals is with manufacturers. Wastewater and stormwater agencies aren't responsible for the presence of these contaminants and they can't just treat them away. Uh, so we really need to address products and manufacturing. A campaign that may accelerate as the EPA develops new, tighter standards to safeguard America's drinking water and eventually the broader environment. Now, limiting PFAS pollution will be a complicated process that will likely happen in stages. The EPA proposes starting with just two of the chemicals. In some cases, industries have already developed or are working on replacements for the PFAS chemicals they use. And if you aren't a chemist and wonder what PFAS stands for, it's polyfluoroalkyl substances. Larry? Okay.